Hello, it's part two of HAL 9000, the robot which balances on a ball. And we started this last time. I'm revisiting a ball balancing robot I made some years ago, which was themed like BB-8 from Star Wars. And that was one of my first Arduino projects. It didn't work all that well. It kind of balanced, but it was very temperamental. So now I've come back to improve the hardware and the software to make something that works pretty well, hopefully. The main improvements are using brushless motors with encoders. So we've got lots of power and agility for balancing and also accuracy and also using an inertial measurement unit that does the DMP on board so we get much more accurate results about that data about the robot tipping around. So we're still going for four wheels which is what we did before. There's various pros and cons between three and four wheels but four wheels should be fine. My wheels are built on suspension so that they should be okay and it should grip the ball in both axes. Now this project is going to be open source. I'm going to publish all the CAD and code when it's done and if you'd like to support me on Patreon or for a YouTube channel membership then those links are in the description below. Patrons and YouTube channel members can get all the videos up to a week early which means that they've probably already got next week's video and don't forget I've got a merchandise store if you'd like to support the channel that way as well. The main thing I've done since last time is painting the ball black. This was originally a two-part expanded polystyrene ball and it was already painted with liquid latex with acrylic paints mixed in to get bb 8 ball pattern. I've now gone on to mix molding latex with black acrylic paint to make quite a thick rubber solution that I've painted several coats on all over. There are some dings and dents in it, but it's quite grippy and that should just be fine. I really like to get a rigid fiberglass ball at some point, but I can't immediately find one for sale. I've also taken a Dremel to the aluminium bits in between the rollers on these omnidirectional wheels that I'm using because they were sticking out to match the contour of the wheel. But of course the ball sticks out the other way, which means sometimes they scrape a little bit. So I've gone and cut all of those back on all of those pieces on all four wheels. So I've installed two O-drives on this mount here. We've got one here and one on the other side you can't quite see. And those are connected to both the motor power for both the motors and the motor encoders for both motors. So each O-drive controls two motors. This one's connected to this motor and the one on the other side. And that's the one that moves it in one direction. The other one will be responsible for moving it in the other axis. The O-Drive uses those encoders so that it can energize each phase of the motor. It's a three-phase motor and it can energize them at the right time as the motor's rotating. So it knows what the motor stator position is. That's really important for driving three-phase brushless motors. It also uses the encoder for position and velocity control. And we can feed it that data over serial from an Arduino. The brushless motors, of course, are really powerful. So we get high torque at low speed and high torque at high speed and that's a really important characteristic for a motor and drivetrain for a balancing robot. I fitted two 11.1 volt LiPos in there which will give us a total in series of 24 volts and that should be fine for driving all these motors. The O-Drive is actually a 56 volt version but we're not going anywhere near that in this build and that should be sufficient for powering the motors at the right speed with the right amount of torque. And it currently weighs in at about four and a half kilograms. So we've got quite a bit of mass building up there. And that doesn't include the head cosmetics, which pop on top there and the rest of the control electronics. But that's okay, because what we really want is the heavy mass on top and the light empty ball underneath. If I were to balance a stick on my hand and try and move my hand around underneath to keep it balanced, it's much easier with a heavy mass on top. And that's because the heavy mass on top has lots of inertia that keeps that still and my hand can move around really quickly underneath. In this case, it's exactly the same. The ball is essentially the wheel of the robot and we want to be able to move that very quickly to keep it under the center of gravity of the robot to keep it balanced. So having the mass on top is really good and having the ball light underneath is exactly what we want. If we're the other way around then the robot wouldn't be able to control the ball and it would essentially end up driving off or it wouldn't be able to move around and it would stay sat on the top with the ball just embedded in the carpet if it were really heavy and a little robot that would just rise to the top and nothing else would happen. The next thing we need to do of course is put some control electronics in there to actually make it actively balance on the ball. But before we do that is a quick ad from the component sponsor for this video and that is Cool Components. Cool Components stock Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Microbit and many many other electronics and project parts. They're a reseller for Adafruit, Sparkfun Electronics and Teensy so you can get all those parts and associated modules for your projects such as shields, hats, soundboards and displays. Cool Components also stock a range of robot arms and accessories and lots of other components like switches, LEDs, cameras and controllers. So you may remember that I filmed my Sonic the Hedgehog balancing robot, the final part of that video series in Cool Components warehouse because there's lots of space to go whizzing round and that project's a really good primer building a two wheel balancing robot 
for building a robot that balances on a ball. So check out that series and also the LG robot that I built also balanced on two wheels. And both of those projects use brushless motors. <laughs> Yep, we're going to be using the Teen C 4.1 again and the MPU 6050, and this is the Adafruit MPU 6050. And the reason I like that board is because the MPU 6050 does the DMP on board, which means it will mix the gyro and accelerometer data for you and just give you the answer in degrees for tip in at least two axis and rotation as well. Now, the Teen C 4.1 is a 600 megahertz ARM Cortex M7. It's far over specced for this project. We could easily build a balancing robot with a good old Arduino Mega. Apart from its huge, and the teensy's really small. So I've soldered everything onto the Perma Proto board. All these things are on sockets so I can replace them or change them or upgrade them or use them in another project in the future. The MPU 6050 is I2C and I've also got the NRF 24L01 radio chip here and that's an SPI device. And that's going to allow me to use a remote control to control the robot. So I'm using Jeff Roberg's I2C DevLib library to read the data from the MPU 6050. There's a number of examples for Arduino. The important one is the IMU0 sketch, and that allows you to calibrate the MPU 6050. It dumps out some values you put into your own sketch, and that means that even though they're manufactured slightly differently in the factory, we get that calibration data and we can get our zero points correct. So I'm currently using that sketch to output the data for the MPU 6050, which is the last two columns, and I'm also using the NRF library to go and read the axis from the remote, and I've got three axes there. So we've now got our remote, and this is just an Arduino Mega. It's got two three-axis joysticks in it, which also rotate, as well as moving in the other axis. But I'm only going to be using one axis on one joystick and two on the other one, because that's all we actually need to control the robot. And this is actually the remote from the LG robot, and obviously we're just using the NRF 24L01 and reading the same data structure. So now we can move that remote around. This axis is two of those data columns, and this one is another one which is going to actually rotate the robot head around, and that's why we need three axis. We're also reading the MPU data, and you can see that in the last two columns as I tip it, one for pitch and one for roll. And as you can tell from the funny shape mount it's on, it fits just on there, and that means the MPU 6050 axis are aligned perfectly with the wheels, for the two axis we're going to drive with. So I now need to wire in the serial lines and I need to wire in some power and we should be to get this thing tuned up. Now I have had some issues with the NRF 24L01s being close to brushless motors and that causing interference. So I'm not sure if we're going to be okay with the brushless motors down there. We do have the power wires for the brushless motors quite close and I'm not sure exactly where the issue is. So I'm going to make the lines for the serial lines long enough that we can raise this up and there's plenty of space in the robot head to mount this higher and try and get some clearance from the nasty RF we might get. So we're all wired in. We have the two main batteries wired in series and those are fed to both the O-drives so that we get 24 volts. Underneath this platform is actually another battery which is an 11.1 volt LiPo and that feeds a separate regulator to power the electronics. So I'm using an adjustable regulator here set to 5 volts and that goes to my Perma Proto board and it powers everything. Now there's a 3.3 regulator on board the Teensy, and that's actually powering the NRF 24L01, which is a 3.3 volt device, but the MPU 6050, despite being a 3.3 volt device, has its own regulator on board, so that's wired to the five volts as well. I also have a common ground wire that goes from the grounds from this regulator and the battery and the ground for all the electronics, into the ground of the O-Drive, so we've got common ground throughout the system. And that means we don't need a separate ground for our serial comms, so we've just got the RX and TX wires coming down to the O-Drive, because they're already commonly grounded throughout the whole system, so that's fine. And we've also got another ground wire that comes down to the reset pin. Now that'll get grounded to reset both O-Drives to cut the motors off, so it's a bit like an emergency stop. And the advantage of not having all these ground wires is we don't introduce any ground loops. If we were to ground in more than one place at once, then we essentially make a big loop antenna with our ground wires that can pick up lots of nasty radio noise. And there's now this top panel which has two pots which will be for trimming up each axis because the robot isn't perfectly symmetrical and perfectly balanced, so I'll need to vary those zero points for the IMU data so we can get it to balance perfectly on the top of the ball. We've also got two switches, and one of those is for O-Drive initialization, and one of those is the reset which resets the O-Drive so that's kind of the emergency stop.
So that is all the motors powered up and now we've got holding power using those encoders to hold the motor position and the little sequence you saw there was the calibration that calibrates the motor stator position versus the encoder position so it can energize the motor phases correctly. Now I can set an offset here, we've got a Z index on those encoders so we could have a quicker startup where we can pre-calibrate that offset but I'm not using that for now so we're just using the full calibration sequence on the O drives. Power supply is incredibly important for this, obviously this has to balance on a ball, it weighs quite a bit and we don't want it to fall down because the data's bad. So both the MPU6050 and the NRF24001 are incredibly susceptible to bad power. So that's why we've got that separate battery and we've isolated it from any transients on the main battery lines that would come back from those brushless motors. And we've also got that single point of grounding so we don't get ground loops. Now we are using regenerative braking as well. So I've not got the brake resistors on the O drives and I've used the O drive tool to calibrate the O drive to use the battery for braking. So when it decelerates the motors, it recharges the batteries and that's another reason we could have transients on the power lines that would affect the electronics and I've isolated that to a separate battery. So now we need to make an algorithm that will actually allow it to balance on the ball reading the IMU data and moving the wheels in response. So of course what we're trying to do here is tune up a PID controller which has three terms we can tune to go and make the robot balance and I've got quite a lot of experience with balancing robots which I've shown you in this video and in part one so it should have been an easy tune up however it feels like I can't tune it aggressively enough to balance it's almost there but as soon as I try and put that bit of extra gain on to try and make it sensor properly then basically as you can see the wheels are spinning out of control and I think that's for a number of reasons. So I think my suspension system and the wheel configuration is okay because if I turn it this way all the wheels run absolutely fine but when I come to move it in one axis or the other then it's not quite so good and you can hear a nasty scraping sound. Oh, it's stuck. So this is an expanded polystyrene ball and I've coated it with liquid latex as I said at the beginning, but the ball is quite soft. I can stick my finger right into that and it's quite kind of flexible and I thought that would give me extra grip. But I think what's happening is the wheels are actually getting stuck in with the little omni wheels around the outside of the wheels. They're getting embedded into the ball and I've still got these metal pieces in the middle of the wheels which are actually causing the scraping. And you see I've carved out several lumps of the rubber here which is just coming off the ball now. So I'm pretty sure that's what's happening when it's moving in one axis, the wheels run fine this direction. When they have to move the other way and they're in the wrong position, then the metal is actually scraping and carving up the ball surface. And that's causing loads of friction, which of course means the other axis can't move easily all the time. My other thought is whether the wheels are far enough apart, so whether they grip around the ball enough, and perhaps if they did, when it tilted over, then there wouldn't be so much gravity just pulling it off so it falls off and the wheels would still be gripped around it. However, the original one I made, which actually worked better at this stage, the wheels are actually much closer together because they had to fit inside BB-8's head. Um, however, this is much lighter, so probably the effect of those sticking in the ball isn't so much, and it's the same ball, remember? And so they probably don't get jammed on the bits in between the Omni wheels as much, which is probably why this almost worked, even though it really shouldn't have done. And check out part one for more details on what I did in the first place several years ago. And of course, what I really want to solve here is the problem of a robot that balances on a ball. And I want to publish that as open source when I'm done. I have built various droids in the past, which I detailed in part one, which have the mechanism inside the ball, another two BB-8s and also BB-9E. And that had the head held on with magnets, of course, on a head control arm that can move in three axis, as well as three axis of rotation and so on in the ball. So I've already sort of solved that problem multiple times, and there's lots of other builds out there, but this is something significantly different. 
So I thought about 3D printing a rigid ball to put this on. I did that for my BB9E build, and that did have the mechanism inside with the head held on with magnets, but I had casters on that head, and those are really forgiving. So even though there's some blemishes in the surface and the details of BB9E, those casters ran on that rough surface okay. With this, it's gonna be a lot more critical to get that ball smooth. So at the moment, I'm thinking about purchasing a fiberglass ball, which is perfectly smooth on the outside. So we're gonna to have to come back for a part three on that once I've acquired one. And of course, we've still got HAL 9000's head to put on. And this is gonna be HAL 9000 from Space Odyssey 2001 themed, because I don't wanna do any more BB droids having done four already. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And if you want to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, the links are in the description below. All right, that's all for now.